okay uh, we will start our lecture session uh, vijay sanjeevni jay pratik and let others join uh, in their own time pratik is ready sanjeevni keep time yes sir you can start pratik good evening everyone today my topic is make in india campaign The Make in India uh, campaign encourages foreign investment that brings the latest technology, broadens our knowledge, and infuses the development within the country. In 2013, uh, India was in a severe economic crisis when the emerging market had crashed and the growth rate had fallen uh, drastically. Prime Minister Narendra Modi launched the Make in India campaign amidst the crisis situation on 25 September 2014, which aimed. at attracting foreign companies to set up factories in india and invest in the country's infrastructure now let's look at the vision behind the make in india campaign the make in india campaign aims at promoting india as a destination of foreign investment and a place uh, for manufacturing design and innovation globally the make in india initiative is not only a target uh, is not only a target that uh, that the target for manufacturing sector but also aims at promoting entrepreneurship in our country currently the manufacturing se- uh, sector pro- uh, contributes to 15% of our gdp the action the action plan of the make in india campaign was to raise the contribution to 25% to the gdp by the year 2020 now if we look to the symbol of the make in india campaign it is made up of a lions it is it is a lion made up of clocks that is gears which was inspired from the ashoka chakra the symbol itself gives a very powerful message uh, like the lion symbolizes strength and power while the clock signify development and progress just like every coin has two sides uh, a concept also has its advantages and disadvantages make in india concept is a no exception since the campaign demands a lot of industrial sector and the development of technology the agriculture area the agriculture sector will be neglected as a lot of indian population is earns their livelihoods through it the development of industrial sectors demands a lot of plots water and other natural resources currently india not only india but any other country is not in a position to allow unnecessary depletion of natural resources in order to make the in order to develop industrial sector now let's look over some advantages side of the campaign <clears throat> Labor is available in plenty in India, which makes it a uh, preferred manufacturing destination. More job opportunities Last can be second. provided for the huge population. The manufacturing sector will not boost the trading sector, but will also increase the GDP of our country. The increase in production leads to the growth in the Indian uh, in of the economy of any country. Make in India campaign will provide a platform for many small entrepreneurs to grow. lastly i would like to conclude my topic by saying as i have said earlier every coin has two sides the make in india campaign is like a biased coin it is a, it will always turn I in know. the betterment of our country thank you okay good pratik going on right lines confidence is okay content wise okay and uh, these topics are relevant because these are the most talking points nowadays whether it is atmanirbhar bharat swachh bharat mission make in india campaign india becoming powerful so why we should have make in india campaign if you understand the essence of it you will realize already we are late we should have been self reliant by now for many aspects but we are not energy is one sector defense industry is another <clears throat> the hardware industry of the computer field it is the most critical thing today like semiconductor once taiwan crisis is on uh, talk and uh, china and whatever issue is going on see how the repercussions are there for any country which is dependent heavily on such aspects if there is a russia ukraine war how oil affects or the energy requirements of other countries affect and that is how the markets fluctuate the economies are affected a country which is 
resistant to all of course in today's uh, world it is difficult to be in isolation but the self dependency will to some extent will uh, protect us like covid is an ideal example where we had no problems as far as the food goes agriculture is our backbone agriculture has seen us surviving very well throughout the uh, covid scenario whereas many countries who are dependent on imports of food related items could not impose the lockdown now for other industries we are not self reliant and it is high time if we really want to achieve our aspirations meet our aspirations like 5 trillion dollar economy <clears throat> then fighting against today's scenario which is building upon <clears throat> the things like uh, narrative of trade war china blackmailing the world and who is our neighbor so how to challenge such scenario by posing ourselves in a very very comfortable position and as long as we are dependent on any nation we cannot have that strong position to dictate our terms today despite the fact that europe is opposing <clears throat> russia's invasion into ukraine the fact is europe is dependent on russian oil just yesterday onwards there is a serious news there is some sabotage in a gas pipeline which supplies the oil to germany or the whole of europe and this issue is not normal it will affect entire world once europe is down or if there is any severe crisis of energy requirement especially winter is coming so if europe is affected economy goes down entire world is today complex scenario we will be affected that is why make in india campaign though it is late but it is uh, very important and we are moving on very strongly on this okay good prateek who is next ready jai ready sanjeevni yes okay sanjeevni will go ahead with sanjeevni pratik keep time okay sir <coughs> you can start okay uh, good evening to all today my lecture topic is health health according to the world health organization is a state of complete physical mental and social well being and uh, not merely the absence of disease and infirmity history of health uh, the meaning of health has evolved over time in keeping with the the meaning of health has evolved over time the keeping with the bio uh, biomedical perspective early um, early definition of health focus on the uh, focus uh, focus on them on the body of ability uh, body ability uh, to function health was seen as a state of normal function that could be uh, disputed uh, from time to time by disease since uh, 1970 uh, the federal health people program has been a visible uh, component of the united states united states approach to improve the population of health the world health organization describe mental health as a state or uh, state of well being in which in which the individual uh, uh, individual relies his and her own, his and uh, his or her own abilities can uh, uh, can copy with the normal uh, normal stress of life uh, the uh, uh, maintaining of health uh, uh, ment- um, achieving and maintaining uh, health is an uh, ongoing process stopped by the both uh, both of evolution of health care uh, health care of knowledge and practice, uh, practicing as well as personal uh, personal strategies and organization of uh, organization uh, for uh, staying health an important way to maintaining uh, maintaining one uh, personal uh, personal health personal health to have a uh, personal health to have a healthy diet 
a healthy diet including a variety of plant bases and animal bases food that prove uh, provided new nutri nutrients to uh, to the body <clears throat> exercise physical exercise enhance or maintaining physical fitness uh, and overall uh, strategic uh, one's bone uh, bones and muscles and improve the cardio cardiovascular system according to the national institution of health there are uh, three type of exercise uh, strength uh, strength flexibility and balance uh, sleep sleep is an essential uh, component of maintaining the health and and children say uh, sleep is uh, also uh, virtual for growth and uh, growth and development so lastly i want to conclude that health is a very important for all of us because uh, because if uh, because only if uh, if the health is good uh, we can uh, we uh, save our family our uh, ourselves and our country thank you okay good sanjeevni simple topic of course uh, something more could have been spoken uh, okay simple points you are put though the topic is very simple known to all of us but its importance is very much health especially after covid phase and uh, every day there is some kind of rumors or some news about some new <clears throat> disease or something things are scary lifestyle has become very uh, funny nowadays the generations are becoming weak if we compare our health compared to the previous generation we easily accept that we are getting downgraded reasons are many but whatever we may be the reason we need to protect ourselves strengthen our health and health has got two subsets on two parameters we need to judge our health and that is mental and physical and more so who are aspiring for defense services there is no excuse you need to keep yourself physically fit mentally fit and that is how you will be cracking exams and for life's larger interest also we have to have good health and that is how we will be enjoying this beautiful life otherwise life is ruined if you are not physically fit or even mentally if you are having some issues life is not enjoyable then and right from this age if you can have priority list like career is your one of the important area where you are focusing health is the basic thing you never should neglect it always keep it on top priority small related exercise or some concern for it eating habits all those things that doesn't mean that you start dieting or something like that that is not the solution eat as much as you want to do and enjoy play go for exercises at least till the age of 30 35 if possible 40 there is no worry about what to eat how much to eat as long as you are exercising there is no problem okay <clears throat> and on the health uh, thing uh, my personal uh, um suggestion is please uh, look after your eyes because unfortunately the screen time has increased you can have your own ways and means to protect your eyes almost every kid is uh, getting specs as long as specs is there eyes health is okay no worries but you should not be blind for last 10 12 20 years of your age whatever life is there that should not lead to that situation so eyes is very important and second is ear when you start plugging these ear headphones and all those things i personally feel you avoid such things if it is really mandatory then only you should go for it uh, some places where you want to have privacy or something then otherwise avoid all these things that is my personal observation and suggestion okay good who is next jay yes sir okay sanjeevni keep time yes sir jay you can start okay 
गुड इवनिंग टू वन एंड ऑल टूडेज माई लेक्चर टॉपिक इज वुमेन इन द इंडियन आर्म फोर्सेज इन इंडियन आर्म फोर्स ऑल विंग्स ऑफ द इंडियन आर्म फोर्सेज हैव वुमेन इन कॉम्बैक्ट रोल्स इन इंडियन आर्मी वुमेन आर अलाउड इन कॉम्बैक्ट सर्विसेज एज सुपरवाइजर्स और रोल्स ऑफ एन एन एज ऑफिसर्स इन इन इंडियन एयर फोर्स हैड थर्टीन पॉइंट जीरो नाइन परसेंट एंड एट पॉइंट फिफ्टी परसेंट इन इंडियन नेवी सिक्स पॉइंट सिक्स परसेंट टू थ्री परसेंट एंड इंडियन आर्मी थ्री पॉइंट एटी टू थ्री परसेंट इन डिसम्बर टू थाउजेंड एटीन एंड डिसम्बर टू थाउजेंड फोर्टीन रिस्पेक्टिवली इन नाइनटीन फोर्टी सेवन सर शोनदी लेक्स इन इंस्पेक्ट वुमेन्स ऑक्जलरी क्रॉप्स इन इंडिया एज एंड ट्वेंटीन ट्वेंटी three officer have been granted the rank of lieutenant general there was an uh, women's regiments under netaji subhash chandra bose indian national army called it the Ra- rani jhansi's regiments was one of the kind during world war second in indian indian uh, year 2021 the national defense academy nda entrance exam was open to the female candidates in uh, india paves way for uh, more women's candidates in armed forces in november 1958 the army medical corps become the first unit of the indian army to grant regular commission to the women in indian in india in indian air force uh, inducts women in all roles including combats and supports roles as uh, index women roles and including combats and supports roles as of the september 2020 there are the 18 uh, 1875 f- female officers serving in the iaf including 10 pilots and 18 18 are the navigators in the in the kargil war during in the kargil war the first women to fly in a combat zone during kargil war may uh, may to july 1999 and i lastly conclude that in india in today's times women are walking last are second walking, women are walking to shoulder to shoulder with men in all occupations however the gender equality in still promoted challenge in the army force armed force thank you okay jay a uh, lot of improvement is there only thing you should be able to naturally speak reference should be less whatever reference points uh, you may be having today slowly slowly get uh, away from it and speak more naturally okay very important topic women in indian armed forces how the journey has been and uh, they are proving their metal they are proving their worth they are not second to the counterpart they are at par they have proven it only thing there are some socio economic conditions from which our society is uh, emanating the troops are coming from and uh, as the development is happening we are opening new areas for women in armed forces initially the combat role was not available slowly it is getting opened air force has opened it in the fighter pilot stream army the time probably has not come but it will come more importantly the space for women is there that is more important which area they are working that is secondary and there is no inferiority complex as far as which area one is working or not it is at par women empowerment has happened in uh, officer below rank for the military police the opening has started that is a good sign otherwise in home ministry almost all services paramilitary forces the women recruitment happens in all ranks but in armed forces below officer rank it is not started in that full length full scale it is just in military police as an experiment it has started reasons are there obvious reasons are there but slowly it will open okay good uh, who is there next volunteer come here sir okay uh, subodh you can speak uh, after abhaya we will go to abhaya
Abaya, you are ready? Yes, sir. Okay. Jai, keep time. Okay, sir. You can start now. Okay, so good evening, friends. Today's my lecture topic is Tones and Cons of Science. So basically, science is a systematic knowledge based on the facts and human experiences. The science is a Latin word that is a scientific term means the knowledge. Uh, by discovering uh, science, find, uh, by, uh, by discovering science, scientists are able to create something that uh, that can be uh, that can be surely improve the quality of life. For example, like a computer, telephones, televisions, and etc. Uh, with the discovery of things, invention, inventions, people can achieve their uh, the uh, people can achieve their aspirations or uh, as, uh, aspirations more uh, more easily. Uh, as we know that science has helped our uh, ha helped our country a lot. Help our country a lot. Uh, it can it can turn a small and poor country into a progressive country. Uh, without any invention, science and uh, uh, so. Without any, uh, without any inventions of the science and the cleanliness of efforts of uh, scientists, many diseases such as like malaria, ca cancer, uh, etc. Uh, science, it, uh, science, it will be make our life easily. They help us organize our our daily uh, activities. This helps our work can be done faster. It helps us also uh, communicate more easily with uh, with uh, with each other. By telephonics, uh, this helps us the uh, better know as understand other culture and uh, societies. The discovery of uh, mechanization, better seeds, better uh, irrigation uh, techniques, and pest control has helped to increase uh, uh, increase from productivity levels in transportation. Railways, mo modern uh, liners, jeeps, and motor vehicles have made our uh, life more comfortable and uh, have effect great about great. Approach from modern from modern communication, uh, modern communication, uh, commercial development and uh, industrial. The uh, the the invention of the computer helped us to progress of uh, calculation in uh, laboratories also. But uh, the second side of the uh, second side of the science, when technology falls into the wrong hands, it can uh, it can it can have negative impact on our society, such as uh, the rising rate of the cyber. Cyber crime, hacking, theft of the personal uh, information, and the pornographic website. Uh, a pornographic website. The uh, the technology has also increased the alternative and opportunities for the terrorists. So uh, uh, people can create scam spam in many ways. Young people have also been very addicted to the gadgets. They uh, that they can spend too much time uh, too much time with them. And people are too depend on uh, depend on the uh, gadgets. When the technology falls, uh, we are feeling like helpless. Uh, sometimes it ever affects our health. Uh, sometimes it's uh, affect on our health and lifestyle also. We will uh, we will become lazy. We will uh, we will miss our traditional uh, traditional lifestyle and uh, discover our simple and healthy life. It uh, affect on our mental health also. So lastly, I just want to say, science is a need. Uh, science is a need of uh, humanity, but people also need to know what the positive, uh, positive impact or negative impact. The science also contributes to the growth of the man and society generals. Thank you. Okay, good, Abhaya. After a long time, you are back. I hope all okay. Yes, sir. Now it's all okay. Okay. Now it's all okay. Means something. Was disturbing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, science pros and cons. Very funny topic and very related to our daily life. As we are advancing on one side, there are problems being created. This is a very very contradictory scenario. We create some facility. We create some ease of doing something, and it has got the flip side to it. You see, we create anything and later on we realize that it has got some bad impact. Right from any entertainment, right from any um, facility of transportation. Suppose we are able to fly today, but it is so dangerous if the accident happens in air, the survivability 
rate is almost negligible we are increasing our speed of movement accident prone scenario emerges we have defense related any kind of invention through science it is speedily causing the damages the speed is increased for uh, imposing some kind of bad impacts plastic we created now we are somehow trying to control it we through this route of science we did industrialization now we are worried about environment concern we have ease of life but then we are worried about health now earlier we had less transportation we used to walk we used to run or whatever natural health was maintained we are producing some kind of packaged foods we are adding preservatives and there are the side effects of health so it is interesting so we have to find out midway science and technology will bring a lot of attractive things our life our life will be interesting superficially but heart of heart everyone realizes that there are some problems today mobile phone is one of the marvelous invention we are witnessing the facilities of every other thing is getting integrated into the handheld mobile device whether it is clock whether it is tv whether it is messaging that is postal service then marketing education this is all in one device it is the epitome of today's scientific development but then on the other side we feel at times that this has ruined our life it has affected our peace of mind so it is interesting it is up to us science will give a lot of good facilities human have to choose wisely and draw a line how much to use where to use and this line drawing is a matter of wisdom and uh, we hope the wisdom prevails in all of us okay good who is there next subodh sir I'm... okay abhay yes, next time yes sir subodh you can start good evening to all my lecture topic is why you hesitate to join the defense forces so let me start from the historical point of view in the past when anyone wants to join his king uh, his king's army so he feel very proud in that just like I, if i give examples of the indian dynasties or the indian uh, or the indian kings like chhatrapati shivaji maharaj then uh, maharana pratap maharaja ranjit singh and all the other kings who served for the nation so the people they want to sacrifice for their motherland and they uh, considered themselves proud in that but now what is happening uh, just because of the advent of the inter- advent of the internet and all the other services you don't want to join the defense forces uh, the reasons are first of all uh, the death because youth are very fearful of death because we know that uh, we are engaged with the wars with pakistan and china and we frequently hears the news that uh, if any soldiers got martyred on the uh, on the field area and if any soldiers got martyred on the field area so we know that what happens to his or her family so youth is thinking of it the second thing is that uh, they want to make money at a very faster rate in today's world because we know that youth are basically following the money nowadays and they don't want to do such kinds of services to the nation uh, like uh, if i give my personal examples uh, many of my friends if i talk to them so they simply says that we want to make money and we want to join the corporate jobs and all those things they are talking about it the, this is the second reason and the third thing is that if uh, he if a man who is a soldier around who got martyred on the field so if he will if he is the only earner of the family so it is a big question for him that after his death who will look after his family now if i talk about the merits of joining the defense forces is first of all discipline and responsible approach if you want to serve for the nation if you want to do something for the nation so you have to be disciplined and responsible towards your duties it uh, the uh, forge and the army and the defense forces makes a man physically and mentally fit even if you get any uh, situations difficult in your life so you are able to tackle it with a calm mind it teaches the defense forces being an ncc cadet it is proud uh, it is proud to me that wearing that uh, khaki uniform at a very early age so i could i could tell and i could i could feel the feeling of it 
of joining the defense forces or joining the ncc organization the second thing is that uh, not everyone gets the chance to serve for the nation and we should take pride Last in that seconds. even if we got martyred on the field so it is not uh, this so it will be not disheartening for the uh, disheartening for the family because our family will be get more respect from the society if we got martyred uh, if we got martyred on the field and uh, wearing those uh, medals on the left side of the chest it is one of the most remarkable feeling if uh, we want to join the defense forces so these are the things that uh, youths uh, should uh, join the defense forces and not to hesitate to join the defense forces because everyone will not get the chance to serve for the motherland and to die for it thank you okay good subodh uh, well spoken um, you added that extra point of correlating with ncc your own self that is an ideal way of naturally putting it if you can correlate with your own life examples around you that will add a natural beauty to it good why youth hesitate this is not easily uh, comprehended by people whether this topic is really relevant or not uh, especially someone who is joining defense forces aspirant of defense forces landing in ssb and gets such topic on a card this is on a broader perspective if you have to see as the development happens any area at world level if you see the developed countries we will take the example of small country singapore well developed modernized but they have to make compulsory because the population is less there are other issues also everyone has to serve at least 2 years or whatever in india population is huge we need not to make it compulsory we have got a lot of people queued lined up for joining but the larger issue is is everyone really proud to join passionate to join within india if you see the developed areas slowly after independence initially punjab was represented very well in defense forces but you will not believe of late the passion for joining defense forces is dying down because punjab is a developed state otherwise agriculture and industry the per capita income all these indexes are good comparatively the states which are now developing the youth are more coming from these areas you take any metro city how much representation is there compared to their own population whether it is except delhi delhi is some kind of mixed uh, representation you see mumbai or any metro the representation is not up to the mark it is generally from the middle class who are more aspirant and more passionate to join defense forces so as the state develops or the area develops the will to join goes down this is fact at micro level at macro level and subodh has put it in a very good perspective that how to look at services in defense as a pride a national duty and one should not hesitate for joining or looking forward to join in defense forces good who is next vijay and uh, kartik is left sir me okay uh, subodh keep time yes sir kartik you can start good evening ladies and gentlemen my topic for today's lecture it is drdo drdo stands for defense research and development organization it was founded in 1958 initially it was named defense research and development service which is drds but later it came to be known as drdo which is defense research development organization formed in 1958 it is uh, it has its uh, headquarters uh, in delhi drdo is uh, one of the most largest and uh, most uh, largest and diverse defense organization which works in uh, several fields related to the uh, defense like the aeronautics armaments uh, missiles naval systems uh, electronics Uh, land combat engineering etc 
currently it has uh, more than uh, 3 lakh employees and uh, more than 50000 scientists in the country it is chaired by uh, dr uh, dr sachin kamath uh, drdo uh, has its annual budget of around 1.4 billion usd we uh, can give the credit of india's uh, most missiles to drdo for its uh, innovations during the period of 1980s to 2007 drdo made and uh, in, made and researched uh, a series of missiles such as the agni prithvi akash trishul and uh, nag missiles also uh, drdo is currently uh, in talks with uh, several con- uh, different countries uh, like the current one is with malaysia where the the malaysian uh, government is demanding uh, lightweight tejas aircrafts uh, from drdo uh, drdo uh, has a great future ahead uh, but only if it is uh, it's only if it uh, has to privatize uh, to uh, grow the output and uh, in- improve the production india depends uh, like around 45 to 50% uh, of defense uh, equipments uh, on other countries uh, last 30 seconds uh, primarily primarily uh, the russia uh, so to increase this uh, we have to increase our defense production uh, at our home and increase our self reliance Uh, so that we can get a proper supply of a uh, proper supply of this uh, armaments so i think uh, private sector and collaborations with premier institutions like the iits nits and uh, working with uh, different organizations like the icer and icer would help uh, drdo to uh, increase its self reliance thank you okay good kartik uh, it can be more smooth without any that humming sound uh wala you can check that during practice be little cautious and when it will be removed this humming sound when you are smoothly moving content is more confidence is more there is no problem with your english it is just matter of practice refine it there should not be any other noise when we speak so today it was little more and it can be cut down don't worry just practice and be cautious on that drdo very important uh, organization as far as the national security or the defense related things are concerned the way we talk about isro you know, probably in the similar category we cannot place as of now drdo capability wise there is no problem it is probably somewhere something was missed maybe governments can be blamed we had good scientists in isro so could have been in drd will was missing probably to produce something for our defense forces and state of art things could have been produced by now we would have spent less on importing of defense equipments which is a costly affair and uh, hypothetically if you see if we had self dependency atmanirbharta in uh, defense related equipments our uh, economy would have been different today of late we have started producing there are already orders from the international market for our drdo this is a good sign our tejas aircraft which is now proving to be good getting some name and fame similarly our tanks maybe small arms weapons some radar systems all these things should have been produced in 60s and 70s there is not a single year where the world is not having on a world map i am saying that there is no war going on in fact war will go on it is a big business whether we like it or not and we missed the opportunity to identify this particular field from the 
market point of view we may not be propagating or promoting wars we may not get directly involved in wars but we cannot keep quiet when we have to procure for our own defense and a stage comes where we have to buy it from israel or russia initially it was all russia and then slowly we walked up to other nations a small country like singapore has got its own artillery gun produced in singapore so it is a matter of some kind of thinking why we lacked and now after getting into the total momentum of uh, self reliance make in india mission and movement uh, i think some boost will happen some extra energy will get pumped in more scientists will be motivated to join this industry the pay packages will improve and that industry has to come up so that we don't import anything for our defense forces and as such all three services frontline services are giving indications that we will use what is made in india provided it has to be of state of art we cannot go into war with something which is outdated and research and development in this sector takes time you start on a project it takes at times a decade whether it is submarine or fighter aircraft or some kind of uh, advanced uh, technologies of artillery guns and armored uh, vehicles it takes time so probably we are late but fortunately it has started the momentum is coming up okay i think last speaker sir okay. okay vijay vijay kartik keep time so good evening friends uh, today's lecture topic is who was the chhatrapati shivaji maharaj chhatrapati shivaji maharaj was the founder of the maratha empire in a western india he is uh, considered to be to be a one of the greatest warriors of history and even today also shivaji maharaj chhatrapati shivaji maharaj was born on the 19 february 1630 to shahaji bhosle and jijabai in shivneri fort in in maharashtra chhatrapati shivaji maharaj was pray on a hope for the people whose lives were ruined by the mughal empires he journey as a warrior took up at a very young age of 16 he was the founder of the marathas empire he began to attack the enemies surrounding his kingdom and he kept expanding his marathas empire by uh, capturing on fort after one fort after another slowly he managed to expand his kingdom across western and central india he he was the one who ch- changed challenge and defeat the mighty mighty mughal empires chhatrapati shivaji maharaj was inspired by epics of ramayan and mahabharat uh, those he respected women each creed caste and religion uh, chhatrapati shivaji maharaj childhood teacher was his mother jijabai who who told him the story of epics his mother his mother had a big contribution in making him fearless and brave chhatrapati shivaji maharaj empire was growing bigger and stronger day by day the navy the navy under chhatrapati shivaji maharaj was so stronger that the marathas uh, could hold their own against the british portuguese and dutch also the sixth uh, sixth important warrior they have also most contribution is to establish of swaraj first one who wired a 65 kg swaraj is is named as esaji who fights along with 2000 troops is named as baji who goes into the enemy's camp and break their crown is known as uh, dhanaji who travel delhi to pune distance part pass out in 8 hours on the horse is called as santaji who fights the enemy even if uh, who fights the enemy even if his arm is broken is known as tanaji who tear the tiger's jaw is is name as sambaji and one who builds the paradise of swarajya together they are called as chhatrapati shivaji maharaj they uh, and all their efforts and been successful at they all their efforts have been successful and they become our role model thank you okay good vijay <clears throat> chhatrapati shivaji maharaj 
a role model king an icon in our history something like god like stature and why not there are many reasons we should learn from chhatrapati shivaji maharaj's life a person sees an opportunity and need for some kind of movement he saw there are there is some problem in society initiates like a true leader a mission influences gathers like minded people makes a team and from a small team he creates a kingdom within short span is not very easy because creating something from zero is outstanding and it requires true leadership qualities in any field if you see there are some qualities which today needs to be talked about chhatrapati shivaji maharaj he was truly a person who was balanced secular in his behavior he was not biased he gave justice to the talent of a person he was picking up people based on their merit and justice he was ruthless as far as principles are concerned the respect for women was uncompromisable justice was given as far as possible in the best traditions of our culture humanity and the people's movement or that is why he is also called as janta raja a person who understands people's feelings or people also worship him like our own king this is not easily achievable you have to have that kind of charismatic personality probably today we may be dividing people on the name of such great people great kings but that was not the aim when king shivaji was alive when chhatrapati shivaji maharaj was there in his kingdom the special cavalry was mainly of muslims then the um, foot soldiers or the maulas these were people who were so motivated motivation was of highest order every one was ready to die for swaraj this kind of motivation is not possible if your leadership is not really of that stature so maybe from the leadership point of view from the administrative point of view from the uh, like the way we study ramayana or mahabharata or for that matter any ideal things when we talk similarly in the similar uh, tone we see chhatrapati shivaji maharaj the military tactics used by king shivaji is unparalleled even it is to be studied from the military tactics point of view and it has been studied by other nations too because these tactics after all it is the ground which has to be uh, captured today any amount of technology will give you destructive power but as long as you don't go on ground and occupy it you will not be able to hold on to it so the foot soldier has to have basic tactics and different terrains especially mountainous terrain or the terrain which is hard so there is lot to learn from king shivaji's life the military tactics the leadership abilities then if someone really raises a question how a king should be then probably people have to look at king shivaji that is how ideal king has to be and today it is not king but the political masters or the rulers we can say these people should learn from king shivaji but we also need to learn as a citizen the morality the principled life 
for example respect for women you need not be king only to um, display or carry these kind of gestures in letter and spirit if we really worship king shivaji if we really love our chatrapati shivaji maharaj we can follow these guidelines and that will be true tribute to the uh, such um, hero okay any question we will end here keep practicing see your small practices of lecture it will make you better communicator confident leader and uh, your logical mind analytical mind will develop further because it is not easy to speak point wise this requires practice and it will help in your return also because uh, you are organizing your thoughts you are naturally developing that art speaking on topic spontaneously would be better but even if you are prepared that also is a step towards it only and uh, ssb's preparation revolves around communication so it is a regular practice whenever possible please do it at your level when such forum is there that level but you must continue doing it as long as you are aspiring for competitive exams clearance okay any question from anyone we will have other no, ssb uh, related discussions but more so we are doing lectures abhaya what is the next exam for you sir <laughs> next exam is cds okay or uh, sir i am feeling the form of ssb okay uh, last time i will fill but uh, is not uh, not submitted so that's why i will fill now okay be careful okay go ahead keep preparing anyone anything okay we will end here have a good time enjoy and navratri is going on a very very beautiful environment is there in our society uh, of course probably uh, dandiya and all this kind of schedule is affecting it but wherever possible enjoy okay bye jai hind jai hind